Welcome everybody to Wednesday night service and uh, also Happy New Year. This is the first Wednesday service of uh, 2021 and so we're glad that you're here to join us and we're excited as a church about what God is going to do this year and we're also excited about our Wednesday teachings uh, coming up this this month. Uh, we, we always try to have some type of a series to teach on Wednesdays but this month we're gonna do something a little bit different. This month, the focus, uh, what we're calling this month's focus is from the heart. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna have four different speakers this month of January. I'm gonna be today, Pastor Eric next week, uh, Lauren and Taylor the next two weeks after that. And we're just gonna to speak uh, to you uh, on our Wednesday nights from the heart, which could be anything. And we don't know exactly what that's gonna be, but uh, just whatever the Lord has put on your hearts, and put on each of the speaker's hearts. That's what we're gonna talk about. And so um, today I'm gonna to share with you from the heart. And, uh, and so I'm really excited about this. I was praying about what I should talk about here. And uh, I believe what the Lord wants me to share is something that he actually spoke to me, not recently, but it was several years ago, but it's actually, um, it's a scripture verse that he made alive to me uh, back seven years ago, I'm thinking it's around November of 2013 or so, and it's a scripture that when I read it, uh, it like I said, it jumped out of the, it almost like jumped off the page to me, and uh, the Lord spoke something very, very important that I, that, you know, it wasn't anything profound, it was stuff that I already knew, but it was something that I hadn't really believed, and, and hopefully that makes sense to you, because you can say a lot of things and say that you believe, but until you live it, you really don't believe it. And so, in that scripture, I actually have pinned on my uh, board in my office on the wall there, and uh, it's been there since 2013, and something that I look at because the Lord spoke it to me. So anyway, uh, I'm going to share you that scripture, but before I do that, I need to uh, actually give you some background. In fact, the scripture that God spoke to me dealt with something that I had dealt with in my life since I was in high school, even maybe before. I mean, basically all my life I had dealt with this uh, issue. And, um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that with you a little bit. First of all, so actually I'm gonna get just a little bit real with you today uh, and tell you some things about my set, myself. I'm gonna, you know, basically this is like a mini testimony of some of the things that the Lord's done with me. Uh, and particularly in the area of ministry um, you know, we're all called into ministry. The Bible says that the fivefold ministry gifts are for the saints, uh, that we may equip them for the work of ministry. And so in ministry, uh, I've been doing ministry full time for uh, 25 years. And uh, I can say this, for many of those years uh, in ministry, I had to deal with feelings uh, of not being quite good enough, um, you know, not being smart enough. And, and mostly not just being educated enough. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I need to know something if I'm going to talk to people. And I didn't feel like I had it, what it take, but yet I knew God called me. And so I went forward, I went forward, but uh, being smart enough, being educated enough. And some people may say, well, you know, I've had people say, well, I think you're very smart. I'm thinking, yeah, but uh, you don't live inside me. I know all the things that I don't know. And so I feel like sometimes I'm just not smart enough, educated enough to do what I'm supposed to do. And that could be from growing up in a denominational church. I mean, I grew up in a church, um, you know, believed in Jesus for as long. I can't even remember not believing that Jesus died on the cross. I knew that when I was a kid. I sang the songs growing up. Uh, and so, and in a denominational church, most of the teachers there, preachers and so forth, they, they're highly educated people. And I, and I knew that growing up, that they were people that are highly educated and they were smart and so forth. And, and so, and that just wasn't, that just wasn't uh, me. I mean, I can give you a little bit of background. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't go to college after high school. In fact, my, my parents, my dad and my mom, both, um, you know, Christians, saved people, loved God, good people, great parents, uh, but they were not educated people. My dad, you know, he was a, he was a builder all his life. Um, but uh, he had an eighth grade education, never went into high school. My mom had a 10th grade education. And so, um, you know, education and learning like that was not really a big priority in my family. 
Um, had a big family, you know, I, um, most of you know that. I'm one of seven sons uh, that my dad and my mom had. Uh, I was the number three. And so in my family of the seven sons, only one of them actually got a bachelor's degree in college and went on to get a master's degree in engineering. Only one of them, that was my second to the youngest son. I had one other brother, my youngest brother. I think he went through a year of technical school just to learn some electric, electrician stuff, whatever. But uh, education wasn't a big, wasn't something that was really a priority in my family. And so therefore, when I went to high school, I, I, uh, I graduated from high school. I didn't get horrible grades. I didn't get great grades either. It really wasn't a priority. I wasn't planning on going to college, and so I kind of did whatever I had to do to get by and, and to make it, you know. And, and uh, you know, the one class I can remember hating the most in high school was speech class because I did not want to have to stand in front of people and talk because that was horrible. And I remember I got, I got a D in my speech class in high school mostly because uh, I went to the teacher and said, how much, I didn't put it this way, but I said, can I, can I pass and not do the work? And he looked at it and says, well, you can't, you know, you got to do this. Yeah, but I, I didn't want to do any more speeches. And so I didn't, and uh, I did pass with a D grade, but, uh, and I didn't care. I just, I didn't want to do it again, but I didn't care because I wasn't going to go to college and it wasn't a big uh, priority for me. And so out of high school, you know, I worked for my dad for a while building. I worked in a car dealer for a while selling car parts. And then I got a job, you know, when I was 19 years old uh, as a factory worker and, of course, as a factory worker, you don't need much education to stand in one spot. That's kind of what I did, stand in one spot, put screws in a board or whatever else. Uh, pretty simple stuff. But uh, I did that, and actually I loved, I loved my factory job. I worked there for 14 years. Uh, and again, education wasn't a big deal uh, while I was uh, at the factory. Um, I do remember my supervisor because I actually did real well there, and they liked me there because I had good work ethic. Because growing up, you know, I didn't put much into school, but I worked a lot after school. I worked on the farm because we had a, a small farm that I lived in. I worked at a blueberry farm down the road. And so I worked a lot uh, after high school and didn't really do a whole lot in school. I um, mean, I didn't take homework home to make sure it got done. I worked. And so because of that work ethic, I did very well in the factory uh, for many years. And so, so mostly my, from my early 20s, you know, 19, I think I went to the factory until I was 32, 18 years old to 32. I think it was 14 years I worked in the factory. Um, but during that time, God started doing a work in my life. And it was very, uh, it was a, just an amazing work um, because here I was 20 years old and I really had a hunger for God. And so I just started seeking God during that time that I was working at the factory. Um, and God started doing things and he started bringing people into my life and people were helping me grow. and. Uh, you know, challenging me and uh, to, to start memorizing scripture and to learn things and it was all good. That was a time, um, you know, during that time while I was at the factories when I met my wife because um, I was doing so much work in churches. I really felt called to ministry during that time and so I volunteered in anything I could. Uh, of course, again, I met my wife. Um, we got married and we started raising a family during that 14 years uh, while I worked in the, uh, in the factory. And uh, basically, life was really good during those times. I mean, work was going, wood, was going good, uh, my home life was going good, and ministry was going good. And I was volunteering everywhere, and I just had fun and really kind of got just really comfortable. To me, it was like, if I could just do this the rest of my life, I'd be happy, you know. Uh, and so, but whenever you get comfortable, that's the time when God kind of shakes things up, and he did in my life in my early 30s, you know, and again, I said I didn't have an education and didn't go to college. And so I was in my early 30s and I had a high school education and God started speaking to me about ministry. And I'm like, wow, I, I don't have an education to go to ministry. I'm not, um, I am not equipped. I am not qualified. These things, you know, I'm arguing with God when I'm talking about this. Um, because I kind of thought that he made a mistake in picking somebody. Why don't you pick somebody that has an education uh, if you want them to go to ministry either in their 30s instead of somebody who, who does not? So God spoke to me then about going to uh, Bible school. And, um, of course, that scared me because here, not only did I not do that well in high school, now it's 15 years or so, 14, 15 years after high school, and you want me to go back to school, you know, kind of like you got to be kidding, God. But 
I knew that I knew that I knew that it was the right thing, and I did that. And, um, and so, but when that happened, when I went to school, I remember having to face some of my uh, struggles, what would I call it, some of the things that the enemy put on me even from high school, because now I'm going back to school, and only my only memories of school were all the bad things that happened in high school. I thought, now I'm going back. Of course, this is Bible school. This isn't like high school, public school. This should be a lot better. But still, I had to deal with feelings of not being good enough, not being smart enough, not having what it takes, and yet I knew I had to do it, and I did it, and God, uh, in His grace, was so good to me. I actually did very, very well when I was in Bible school. Of course, all they were studying was the Bible. It was, it was a two-year Bible school. I didn't have to take all the other courses that I didn't want to take. All I had to take was Bible courses, and I did very, very well while I was in Bible school and ready to get out. But I remember being in Bible school. I know this testimony is getting kind of long here, but being in Bible school, uh, I was, my plan was to go two years and being done and then my professor started telling me, because my professors at school, they all had master's degrees and you know, PhDs and all that stuff. And of course, they're teaching at a two-year school and saying to the students, hey, you know, this is a good start, but you need to go on and get your, you know, get your degree and stuff. If you want to be in ministry and be really effective, you got to do that. And like, I was listening to that and like, you know, really, God, I was only going to go two years. I wasn't going to, for four or for whatever. But yet, this is what my professors think I need to do. And I started even planning in my head, oh, no, i got to go on more. And I didn't, I think, and again, all the feelings of being, I don't know if I could do that, you know. And, of course, that didn't happen. I, after, after Bible school, God opened up a door of ministry opportunity. I really knew that was God. And I was done with school. And I started in ministry in 1995 in Kentucky. Um, and that was a good... That was a good place, and that was a good start for me. And um, uh, we were very successful in Kentucky. But when I was there, I was working with, uh, I think we had like five, five or six other pastors on staff. It was a church that had many things going on. So I was one of five or six different pastors there. The other ones with their degrees and so forth. And again, they're all telling me, well, hey, you know, love to have you on staff here. You ought to get your education. Yeah, right, you know. And uh, so I dealt with that, you know, like, should I go or should I not go? But anyway, for years, what I'm saying is after I left Kentucky, I came here in the year 2000. And so last year being 2020, it was my actually 20, 20th year anniversary being here at Nuego. And uh, uh, but for a lot of the time that I was here, you know, I started out with youth ministry. Then I went on to minister to the adults and um you know, working with youth, nothing against the youth here, but at least when I was, when I was in the youth department, I kind of felt like I was smarter than the kids were at least uh, because they were just in high school. I thought, well, at least I got some education. And yet starting to uh, teach then in the adult services, it was like, man, there's probably people out there that's smarter than me doing that. And, and some of you may think, why were you even thinking that? Those are the things that were dealing, that I was dealing with in my mind. And my, can I do this, you know? Uh, and so for so many years, uh, I kind of felt like, ah, I, I need more education. I need more education. And, you know, my, my professors thought I should. And, you know, my other pastors thought I should. Uh, I need to get another. And so I, always those feelings like I'm not quite good enough. So I, for so many years, and probably nobody knows this, I would research different schools and see ones, which ones could I transfer? You know, after a while, you know, I've been here 20 years. Since then, the online schooling kind of really picked up. And now you don't have to go to school to get an education. You can just take classes online. And so it got to be easy. So I thought, well, maybe I need to do that. And, uh, and so in 2013, this is, I'm getting, I'm getting to, the, to the part in my message where the Lord really spoke to me. It was in 2013. And this is after, you know, I've been here, what, 13 years then. And I had, I had checked into so many different schools and I applied to a few uh, and then just never did anything. Because, I you know, of course, being busy raising a kid, kids and trying to put my kids through school and all that, I, I just didn't make it happen. But in 2013, I thought, I think I, think I can make this happen now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. I'm going to try to take classes again. I'm going to go back to school. 
And yet in my heart, I'm kind of like, I don't know if this is the right thing or not. You know, God, is this the right thing? I'm going to go for it, God, but I don't even know if this is right. So I, I did, I took a big step. I applied to a certain school. I got accepted. I, I had my credits transferred to this other school. And my major was chosen. All of this. And I was ready to start. This is November 2013. I was going to start taking classes in January when the semester started. Uh, I was doing all this a couple months ahead of time. Uh, everything was ready to go. I had my student ID card and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, but then I had to take one class kind of as a, I think it was a non-credit class that was like an introductory to online learning class. That didn't, you know, you didn't get credit for it, but you had to take it so you can learn the whole online schooling platform thing, whatever. So. I started taking that class in November 2013, and, and I really struggled with that class. And I know today why it was. It's because I was trying to do something so that I could feel good about myself, because I, I thought if I could just get an education, maybe I'll feel smart. And really, that's not where you get your, if, if you can't get from God, what God, if you can't get what you need from God, it's not going to help. And so I started taking this class, this, this non credit class, just to get prepared, and I was struggling with it. And I thought, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to take this class. Something's not right. God, I don't even know what's going on inside me. I, I'm trying this. And what I did, as I closed the book, I was struggling going through the material. I thought, this isn't even fun. I thought for sure I'd maybe have fun starting to learn again. It wasn't. I shut the book, and I opened my Bible. And I don't know why I opened to Daniel chapter 4, but I did. Uh, but this is where God, God spoke to me out of Daniel chapter 4. Uh, and I'm just going to read you a little bit of this. Um, this is a story... Of course, if you know anything about Daniel, he was one of the Jewish captives. When, when King Nebuchadnezzar came into Jerusalem, took over Jerusalem, destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, conquered Jerusalem, took back Jewish captives into Babylon. Daniel was one of those captives. So, so he's, he's a captive in Babylon, but he's one of King Nebuchadnezzar's top people because he had interpreted dreams for the king in the past, and now he's one of the king's top uh, young men. Uh, on his uh, on his staff, and, and so King Nebuchadnezzar now has another dream. This is in Daniel four. He has another dream, and he says this. He says, "I Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in my house." This is verse verse four, Daniel four. At rest in my house and flourishing in my palace, I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I issued a d decree to bring in. Now look at this. He issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me. They were the smart ones. The ones he brought in were the wise, the educated uh, people, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. So he called in his top people because he wanted to know. And they came in, and guess what it happened? They could not interpret the dream. Uh, and, and, and so they couldn't do it. Here, they were the smartest ones in the nation and couldn't do it. So what King Nebuchadnezzar does is he calls in Daniel. And Daniel was not part of the wise, the wise men. No, he was one of his top people because he was a young man and he was full of the Holy Spirit. And King Nebuchadnezzar brings in Daniel and says, Daniel, I, I have a dream and I don't know what it means. And I brought in all my wise men, but they couldn't. Let me tell you the dream. So he tells Daniel the dream that he had. And then in verse 18, he says, to, he says to Daniel, This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar was Daniel's Babylonian name. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation since, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. See, this is the, he went to all the top people and they couldn't help him out. So he calls in a Jewish captive from the land of Israel, the ones that knew the one true God. This is a pagan king, understand. He doesn't know God. 
But he brings in Daniel, and this is what he says, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. And when I read those last words that day, after struggling about the whole, this whole being smart and being educated, he says to Daniel, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. When I read those words, it was like he took those words and he said them directly to me that day and said, Mark, you are able to do everything I've called you to do because the spirit of the Holy God is in you. Why are you looking anywhere else to find, uh, to make yourself feel like you can do it? I've already made you able to do everything I called you to do. And see, this is not, a, this is not any kind of a word that I hadn't heard before, but all of a sudden it was like the lights came on and... I was sitting there almost like feeling like, why have I even thought that I couldn't do? Why have I struggled here? I'm 53 years old and I've struggled with this for so long. And yet God is saying, you are able. See, here a pagan king could see the spirit of God in Daniel, a child of Israel, somebody who had a covenant with God. A pagan king could see God in him and could see the abilities that Daniel had. I'm thinking if a pagan king can see that, why can't I even see it in myself? And God humbled me that day and said, you're able to do everything I ever called you to do. And don't ever forget that. And I don't want you to deal with this anymore. It's done. It's over. And at that moment, it was over. Okay. At that moment, I knew, God, I'm able to do whatever you called me to do. It was that. It was a simple word but it was so strongly spoken to me. I mean, it wouldn't, it, if God had said it to me in an audible voice, I don't think it would have been any stronger than the way he said it to me that day. And that day it was over with, and I didn't deal, I'm not, can I say I've never dealt with that again? I can say this, I've been tempted to deal with that again, but I've had the scripture here. I always go back to the scripture. Every time I feel like I don't have what it takes, I go back to the scripture because he spoke it to me that day and I'll never forget it. You are able for the spirit of holy God is in you. That means I am totally equipped. I am totally prepared. I am totally trained. I am qualified to do anything that God has called me to do. So here, I want to just close here. You know, if you're waiting to feel qualified to do something, you are already qualified. You cannot go by your feelings. Pastor said that this weekend. Are we a church of feelers or are we a church of believers? It's about just believing what God says about you. And if you believe what God says, you are qualified to do anything he said because you have the spirit of the Holy God in you. And that's, that'll never change. If you're born again today, you've received Jesus into your life, you have that spirit in you. You can get baptized in the spirit, will it come upon you, but you have that spirit in you. And so don't let any of these other things come against you. You know something? If formal education was required for ministry, the disciples didn't even meet that requirement. So I'm going to, leave it, I'm going to read one more scripture because this is important. Acts 4.13. This is, this is Peter and John after they uh, raised the, the lame man. The, the, their lame man, he came to the temple. They raised him up and he could walk again. And they were, they were arrested for doing that. Uh, and Peter and John are preaching to the Jewish leaders. This is what it says. Now, when they, that's the Jewish leaders, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were what? They were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. See, the only qualification you need for any ministry that God's called you to do anything, no matter what it is, the only qualification you really need is that you've been with Jesus. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that formal education is not good. It is good, okay? It needs to be a good education, okay? Because there's a lot of education, even in Christian schools, that'll, that'll preach faith right out of you. But, so I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying you don't need more than Jesus because he's everything you need. And so you are able to do whatever. So there, there's, my, there's my from the heart message to you today. I hope this really helps you. I know was, I got kind of real you, maybe got too long. But um, um, I believe it was a, just a, it was a good message. It's something that God spoke to me, and I think it really blessed some of you. So thank you for listening to me. You guys have a great week. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.